OK, Alan, what we're going to do now is take some x-ray pictures of your head and neck. To do this, we have to move the table upwards and then move the table into the skull unit. Nothing's going to hurt or touch you, and all you have to do is keep still for me. Is that all right? The radiographer inserts a cassette okay, to record the x-ray image. X-ray into In this case, it's not a traditional screen film cassette, but an array of phosphors. These store luminance as a function of X-ray exposure and act as a glow memory of the X-ray intensity at each point. Okay. The beam must be carefully aligned to the area of the patient under examination. The white light highlights that area that will be exposed to the X-ray beam. I'm now going to turn our machine upside down. In the case of a skull X-ray, it's very important to avoid the eyes, if possible, as they're sensitive to ionizing radiation. This will come down in front of your face, but it's not going to hurt you. Very, very steady there for me. That's our first picture ready to take. Having checked the alignment, the radiographer withdraws behind a lead glass screen, selects the exposure, okay, Alan, nice and, steady and proceeds for me, with please. the X-ray. Okay, Alan, well done. After exposure, the cassette reader converts the intensity of each element of the phosphor array into a digital record and can also print out an image for the radiologist to examine. In this case, the image shows a fracture to the skull, but the doctor is concerned that there could be damage also to the top of the spine, something that won't show up in a planar X-ray. As a result, the doctor will send this patient for a CT scan.